What's going on guys? Shane here with Jeremy Marinez at 8711. We'll Jeremy see. is a fight choreographer. And we're gonna be talking about fighting multiple opponents. You may be thinking, well he's a choreographer, it's all fake, it's not real. It's true, but there's also a lot of concepts and if you think about it, he's dealing with this stuff a lot more than most MMA fighters are. It's a one-on-one -on -one fight, you have no shirt, gloves, there's a ref, and there's rules. We're talking about a street fight. We're gonna be introducing some new concepts to you guys. Yes, taking MMA moves, the clinch, boxing footwork, taekwondo kicks, but are also gonna be incorporating some Krav Maga, some parkour, gonna be using a lot of the shirts and jackets, so we're gonna be showing you the clinch. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience. I've been doing stunts for the last 10 years uh, here in Los Angeles, uh, traveling all over the world. And as a choreographer slash fight coordinator, um, environment and spatial awareness is, is a big, big part of my job because sometimes we're fighting in apartments, sometimes we're fighting in an alley, sometimes we're fighting on a plane in zero gravity. Uh, if you haven't seen Triple X yet, <laughs> that's uh, one of the last films I worked on. I got to, uh, a chance to work with Donnie Yen and uh, double Tony Jaw as well. Um, so check that out if you haven't seen it, but if you watch all these movies um, The biggest thing is you never know where you're gonna be next. They're fighting in traffic. They're fighting random right, places, so. right, which is true to a street fight You never know when or where you're gonna get in a street fight But the whole idea here is use your surroundings and also be aware of Opponents and things that are around you. Are you fighting on loose gravel? Or are you fighting on a wet ground? Is there a curb behind you that you could trip on? These are the kind of things that you need to get in the right frame of mind you know at all times because most attackers try to catch you off guard you never know when it's going to happen so the first thing we're going to talk about is spatial awareness so that it's just that concept you know it may be better to have a wall behind you not directly behind you because you want to have an escape route but also people can't sneak up behind you remember that in a street fight escaping with your life is winning the fight drop your ego you, you know you don't got to win via knockout or submission because it's making sure that you can go home to your family that night the other thing is, um, besides spatial awareness, we talked about range control. Uh, this is something that even most beginner fighters don't understand. They'll learn a new technique, maybe a spinning elbow, but they'll throw it from back here, <laughs> which, is, which is very silly. <laughs> so if I'm far enough from Jeremy to the point where I can turn and run, great, that's, that's the best situation. If we're in jabbing range, then I'm not gonna be throwing elbows, I'm gonna be throwing jabs, I'm gonna be throwing kicks to keep them away. And then if other people come in, if we're clinched up, we're going to be talking about the clinch more so later on, then I need to use this. And I can't get stuck here. I can't be occupied. So if people run up behind me, then maybe I have to go with a side kick or a back kick to buy me some time and then know how to escape the clinch. Or what we're going to show you next is a great concept using the t-shirt or a jacket. So one of the concepts that people often talk about, and it's very true, is you want to get people in a straight line. Let's say Jeremy and Bruce are attacking me. This is an ideal situation because I'm fighting one guy. The second that Bruce comes over here and it's a triangle formation, very dangerous because Jeremy can hit me from behind or grab me, very dangerous situation to be in. So using boxing footwork, staying balanced, even weight, you want to try to get to this position. But what Jeremy's going to demonstrate now is using shirts or jackets to control. Sometimes you have these articles of clothing. We're not in an MMA match. So a lot of times if I have these multiple attackers and if I look at Shane like, he's wearing shorts and a shirt, I'm not gonna have many grips, right? If we're going back to like judo or any type of throwing combative uh, sport, you have all this article of clothing to play with and it's not gonna be as clean as in the movies where you use it, but if I, if I pull this shirt over, a, it's gonna be disorienting for him and I can almost use this as a dog leash and, and see the way I'm gripping. The more I struggle this way, those are really annoying in the face. As disorienting as I can, I get him off, I get him in between us. So if he starts trying to punch, even if he, he throws clean shots, even if he throws clean shots, it's gonna be hard. Because I have this control on him. Um, another concept that you were showing earlier too that I definitely want to share is uh, kicking to the ankles, to the shins, to the knees, and also when he's going to punch, that's a great time to redirect him and uh, take him off balance. Could you demonstrate that as well? Yes, of course. So, so in, in this situation here, you, you always have the knee. I love going for the knee. 
If it's a life and death situation, especially if it's multiple attackers, I go for the knee, sometimes off the side of the knee. But there's also, cut kicking really low is a lot more effective than just Charlie horsing somebody. But you can if you need it, if that's there, inside kicks, low kicks, just kicking their base out from under them. Everything I do is off timing. So if, if he's gonna punch, right? Right, the worst time to try to grab him is here. How many times have you seen that in a movie? We, we create that stuff, it's, it's, that's fake, right? But if you're before the punch, or if you're after the punch, and you're shooting, right? That's when you, when you're in this little messy scramble, that's when you would get your, your little grip, right? And, and just like with, with our multiple attacker, right here I'm gaining distance, and I'm disorienting him with, with these kicks. Boom! While this guy's punching. Boom! Bam! And I'm tripping this guy up as I move around. One of the big takeaways from this, guys, is it's not MMA. We're talking about a street fight. Yeah, you can absolutely take moves. We recommend that you take moves from the training that you've done. But no, not everyone's going to have a puffy jacket like that. Um, but in the wintertime, most likely they will. You can still use the shirt. You can bunch up the shirt to get a, a better grip on it so that it doesn't rip. But the idea here is use what's around. Use articles of clothing, use poles, use walls. You no, know, you really want to use your environment. Um, very different from the MMA cage or a boxing ring, which is very important. We're going to be introducing new concepts as well. So definitely comment below and let me know if you enjoyed this video. And definitely check out these guys. Links are in the description below to their YouTube channel and Instagram and all that. Until next time, I'm Shane. Jeremy Marinas, you can follow me on Instagram at Skills, J-E-R-M, skills with a Z. Of course, and, and Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Lee conception on Instagram. Cool. All right, guys, until next time, be sure to subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does.